What's cracking, everybody? New video. So yesterday, I did a reaction to a Sean Atwood uh, interview. 34 years in California prison, part one, with Jamie Morgan Kane. Okay. And a lot of people left comments saying, I stopped right when things are going to start getting good. So we're back with this guy, we're going to try to see if he doesn't put us all to sleep. Um, and I didn't know, and everybody got on me, or a lot of people got on me. Sean Atwood isn't uh, just a regular interviewer type cat. Uh, he did prison time for whatever he went to prison for. Um, so we have that out of the way. Now, let's get to... Big guy. Let's get to Tuffy over here, tough guy, and let's see what he's got in store for us with this new reaction. Um, listen, um, a couple of you guys gave me good ideas, other videos. Keep sending videos in that, the video ideas that you want me to react to. This is how we make it more interactive. You guys get responses and reactions that you wanted, and um, it makes it easier for me. All right, so let's go. Yeah. So anyway, a few days go by, mm -hmm. and uh, I suddenly get told that I have to go into the smokers. And the smokers was a, a, a fight ring that they had on the yard. Fight ring. Uh -oh. And the thing was that though they called it boxing, yeah. it really wasn't anything to do with Marcus Queensberry's rules or anything else. Yeah. It's just go in there and, and try to do your best. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and they told me that, you know, we're going to pick somebody to fight you. I said, oh, okay. Well, you better be there. I said, okay. Because yeah. they said, because your only other choice is you got to go, you know, PC up. You got to right. lock up. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be there. You yeah. know. And they're kind of looking at me because, like, I'm a nobody as far as they're concerned. Mm -hmm. But I'm 30 years old, which is older than most of the guys getting there initially. Do they know your military history? No. Okay. <laughs> they, they basically knew I was a biker because of some of my tattoos. But other than that, they... Yeah. Is any bikers in there? I know my boy, my boy uh, Muzon's a biker. Um, is there, is there uh, biker tattoos that you see or that would tell uh, people immediately like, whoa, that's a biker right there? Because I see a lot of chicken scratch on them. Horrible tattoos. Um, I see a Confederate flag, even though he says he's not American. I wonder where that flag, why he has that flag, now that I think of it. Because he said he grew up in Fresno, Arizona, and San Diego. But anyways, that's just me talking out loud. Yeah. And I spoke to a couple of bikers that I knew people in their clubs. Yeah. So a couple of bikers I kind of touched bases with, but I really wasn't hanging with the bikers either. Mm -hmm. But one of the guys explained to me that anybody who gets challenged to go in a smoker, if they belong to one of those groups, yeah. has to go in there. Yeah. Because if otherwise they don't save face for their group and it shows weakness in their group. And, and they'll now, all smash you. Yeah, so they'll smash the guy for not going in. Yeah. So, but the one guy tells me, look, they're going to pick somebody who's awful big and, you know, probably really strong. Yeah. Well, one thing I learned a long time ago is muscles don't mean anything. Mm. And generally the guys who have the biggest muscles are slow. Mm. You know, they don't know how to fight. That's why they got big muscles so people will be afraid not to fight them. And all that <laughs> stuff. So, anyway, so we get I guess that's why he don't have a muscle on his body. <laughs> He's a hell of a fighter. He just I, I, I don't need a I don't need a muscle. I'm a bad dude. I get you I get you big dog. Get in up there and, and they and the cops would be out there watching these because it's kind of free entertainment. They make bets on them probably. And oh I'm sure they did. Yeah. Anyway, but they ring the bell. Yeah. You know, and they tell you, okay, you know. We're going to ring the bell, and we don't unring the bell until somebody's unconscious, you know. And this is the cop saying this. This is the cop saying Yeah, yeah. So they bring, <laughs> over, they bring over the gloves, and they give us, they're like eight-ounce gloves. They're not, they're not big gloves. They're, they're like, you know, very thin, yeah. padded gloves. And uh, so I step in, and sure enough, this big guy gets in there. I mean, you know. And he's, I'm, you know, I'm uh, five foot six, and this guy's like said, you know, probably closer to six foot. But he's five foot six. Um, 
I can't even keep a straight face, man. He's five foot six of whoop ass, right? He don't need a muscle on his body. You see him, see? But he'll wear a muscle shirt. <laughs> Marking. Yeah. You know? And, and, and the, guy, the guy walks up and tells me, okay, I'm not going to hurt you too much, but I've got to hurt you because they expect me to. And I said, okay, ditto. He goes, what? I said, I won't hurt you too much, but I'll have to hurt you as much as I need to. And he kind of looks at me, and he kind of shooks, like, like you know, and they're all smiling because they know this is a done deal. And so the guy turns back around, and he goes, okay, I tell you what, I'm going to be fair. You get first shot. I said, okay. So I stepped right up, punched him as hard as I could in the throat, yeah. kicked his knee out from under and grabbed his face and slammed it on my knee. And he was now unconscious, unable to breathe and couldn't stand. <laughs> He's dead. He can't breathe. Holy shit. Yeah, I, I, I believe him. It's great. Five foot six, man. Um, this, this is a white shaft. He's a bad mother. Shit your mouth. I'm just talking about Shaft. That's him. They call him Shift. Uh, yeah, he just, you know, he, he handled it like that. You know, punched him as hard as he could in his throat. The guy can't breathe. Um, he has no more feeling in his fucking whole body. He's emotionless now. That's a hell of a punch he got on him. And I turned around and I said, next. What the hell? And, and the cop's standing there and all of a sudden the cop goes, ding. <laughs> and everybody's just staring at me. <laughs> and, and I go, okay. And I climbed out and I walk over and I, I, I just go about my business. Yeah. He didn't even take the boxing gloves off. You know, he, those were his. He won those. Fair and square. I'm glad I never did timer on this guy. He, it would, I would have probably been nervous around him. It would have been the first time, but I would have been nervous. Like, damn, man. Look at him. He wears a muscle shirt with not one muscle on his body. He must know how to fight. And the guy, I hear guys going by pointing at me, secret shit, you know, secret shit. You know, I hear this, right? Yeah. So uh, this one cop comes over to me and he goes, were you military by any chance? I told him, yeah. He goes, I'm going to go look at your C file. Yeah, I don't know what the hell. I didn't know what a C file was at the time. I don't know what that means either. Well, that's your central file. That's, that's well, everything about you is supposed to be in your central okay. file. Okay. And they have the part that you're allowed to see at certain times, and yeah. then there's the confidential sections. Yeah. Well, uh, he goes off. I don't think any more about it. Yeah. So a few days later, I get told that I've got to go back in the smokers because mm -hmm. they think that was a fluke. <laughs> Same dude. He's lost face now. Well, no, no, they're, they're dude. no. It's gonna be a different dude. Okay, but because now they've got a guy who's trained in karate, <laughs> and this guy is going to hurt me. This guy's <laughs> going to do severe damage to me. And they're telling me this to see what kind of response they get. Yeah. he would be one of those sallies where you want to just slap his head every day. Shh, the fiddle, man. Do not tell me another lie today. Sick of it. Yesterday you talked for an hour and everything was a lie. I couldn't live with, you can't live with people like that. Look at him. <laughs> Imagine being stuck in a cell with somebody like that. Yeah. I went, oh, okay. And they go, do you know karate? And I told him, no, absolutely do not. Well, he knows really good karate. Okay. So, like, and I talked to a couple of bikers and they said, yeah, they, they're telling me about the guy. I said, yeah, you know, uh, the guy's got a black belt karate and, Apparently, you know, he, he did some exhibitions at some county fairs and blah, blah, blah. And yeah. He's in here because he used some karate on some guy and broke his arm. And mm -hmm. he's here for assaults and stuff. Yeah. And I went, yeah. He's in Old Folsom because he's a, a karate guy at the fair. Okay. And the guy goes, uh, you going to fight? I guess. I mean, why not? <laughs> And but he knows karate. I went, yeah, okay, you know. He's not been tossed in the Panamanian jungle. Yeah, and so, I go, so I go in this thing, and the, the guy's getting there, and he does this whole thing. Whoa, whoa, and he's yeah. doing all this warm-up stuff. And just as he starts to step towards me, 
I drop all the way down to one knee and I shove my right fist as deep up into his testicles as I can mm. and drive him up into his chest and watch his eyes roll back to white mm. and just fall over. And then I basically got up and I slammed his head into one turnbuckle and then walked him over and slammed him in another turnbuckle. Yeah. And then I threw him out of the ring. That was all she wrote. And I looked at everybody and said, next. Damn. So he, he knocked him out. Punched him in his nuts so hard he knocked him unconscious, unconscious, right? The guy fell on the ground, and this guy was able to pick him up. Because remember, he, he knocked him out. His eyes rolled up. And then he knocked his head, and he knocked his face in the fucking turnbuckle. WWE style. Nope, he's old. WWF style. And then he, he he walked him across the ring. Damn, man. Well, he earned his ink. He earned his horrible tattoos when he was in there. I take it all back. And and there and there again, they've got this like don't know what to talk about. Yeah. So then I get yeah. out of the ring and later I almost don't know what to talk about. I wasn't even there. That day I was going to chow and that cop came up and goes, uh, I read your file. Mm. It says US Marines on this. Said, yeah. What unit? He said Force Recon. He went, oh crap. He goes, Special Forces. And I said, Special Ops. Yeah. He, goes, he goes, yeah. He goes, like the Green Berets. I said, oh no, we're better than there. Rambo ain't got nothing on him. Where look at him. Look at he's even surprised at him. Look at the way it stopped. It's he surprised himself with how good that line was. He's like, oh shit, I said some good stuff right there. You know how many, there are so many um, veterans behind the walls. Unfortunately, especially Vietnam vets, um, you know, they came back from the war. They felt that they were not, and they weren't. For the most part, they weren't um, treated right when they came home. And a lot of them developed drug problems there. They got involved with the opioids over there. Came over here, got strung out, got involved in crime and stuff. So for this guy to act like um, he's the first guy, he's not, I doubt he's he's Force Recon. I, I seriously doubt it. But um, let's just play along with him. And, um, but if, to act like he's the first guy that was ever a Force Recon or even a Green Beret, whatever, and the CDC and that the cops would really be like, oh, fuck, man, wow. Most of the guards are, are, are veterans. And um, it, you're just another convict, you know. Your military back. David, somebody needs to get this guy in the ring with somebody. This is one of those bushidos, right? The bushido artists. Look at his. Yeah, let's let's, let's get some more of this. <laughs> <laughs> the guy's like, I was like, <sighs> he goes, I keep that under wraps. So, okay. Yeah. So then. The next day I get a job mm -hmm. and my job is to be a surgical tech at Folsom. Yeah. And they send me up and I meet this doctor named Dr. Texter. He's and he read the thing about what I did there at Vacaville. Yeah. And he goes, Oh, he goes, so you're well qualified. Say mm -hmm. So he goes, well, there's five of us doctors. We each have a surgical tech working for us. He goes, mm -hmm. you're the only one that's qualified. The others have learned while they've been here so mm -hmm. they can do stuff, but they're not, they, they don't hands on like you. Yeah. He goes, here's what we do. We take you you'll be taking out BBs when the guys get shot with the shotguns mm -hmm. and usually come from the other other San Quentin over here. Mm -hmm. You'll be taking out sebaceous cysts. Uh, some guys need to get tattoos cut or burned off their necks or and hands because they're going back out the streets and they don't want to have that baggage. Yeah. Uh, and you'll assist me with anything that I need you to assist with. And then you'll do general bandage change and stuff. And he goes, you got a problem with that? No, no. Mm -hmm. You know how to use a sterilizer? Yes, I do, because we sterilize our own equipment and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So, he goes, you're my, you're, you're my guy. You don't have to work for anybody else unless you choose to, but you're my guy. Yeah. He's, 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 he's almost the warden at this point. Um, and he's, I'm pretty sure that's where the story's going. He, he became the warden, but he's, because he's special ops, he wanted to stay an inmate. Um... He's the originator of 60 Days In. We're going to get, I'm sure that's coming later. We're just, we're going to watch a little bit more. Yeah. Okay. So he walks me over and introduces me to the inmate lab techs there and the inmate x-ray techs and walks me over and introduces me to the other surgical techs. Mm -hmm. So 
I meet this guy, Juan Greer, big, big black guy, got 26 inch biceps. He's BGF. I need to meet this guy, and that's Paco Joe, and he's Mexican Mafia. Yeah. Yeah. Then I meet this really, really, really. So this is what liars do. And I don't like to call people liars, but this, you know, they, he's throwing in these names of these organizations to draw you in. Oh, man, you've been around those type of people? And you weren't scared and you were knocking everybody out in sight? Yes, he was. Really squirrely white guy, you know, that looks like he's, you know, constantly on a dope high, but his eyes are bouncing every which way and, and he's kind of sweating nervously. And then there's Wesley Tucker, the guy that I met that's the shot caller that I just had the first meeting with. He's yeah. the lead surgical tech at that time. Wow. And he go, and I go, oh, hey, Wes, how's it going? <laughs> and, and he's like, what are you doing here? And, he, and the guy goes, well, he was a Navy corpsman. And he was, you know, and so he's qualified to be a surgical tech. And he goes, well, you didn't tell me you were in the service. <laughs> didn't know I was supposed to. Yeah. So the doc leaves. So we're all standing there. And Wesley goes, you got to understand, I run things here. Right. So I don't care. He goes, I'll have you know that uh, I'm with the Aryan Brotherhood. I said, I rode with the Confederate Devils. Oh, that's what the tag. Oh, that's what the. Oh, that lay. He really is with the business now, huh? But um, yeah, yeah. So a guy that doesn't know a guy is gonna go up and tell him, but he, <laughs> and he'll and he'll even say the word, the phrase, "I'll have you know," because convicts that grew up in the streets, um, you know, criminals that grew up in the in the criminal world, they speak like that. Well, I'll have you know. I believe everything now. He looks at me. Well, I've been in prison for five years. I said, I did, uh, did my time in Vietnam. He looks at me. This is a pissing contest, apparently. Um, and nobody, uh, you know, these guys that are really with the business, um, they're not pulling out knives. In an era where people got killed for nothing. This is good. I go, are you impressed? He goes, what? I said, I'm not impressed. Are you impressed? We can do this all day long. We want to trade, <laughs> trade our credentials. I can do this with you. Yeah. And he goes, you don't understand. I can have you hurt. I said, you've already tried. <laughs> and he's like, I said, but can you hurt me? Oh, my God. He goes, what? I said, you said you can have me hurt. But can you hurt me? I don't know. And he takes a step back. Well, I'm out of here. And he walks around me, takes off. And... This is completely believable. Even people that have never been to jail understand how much bull that is. Juan Greer just starts laughing. <laughs> this big old black guy, he just starts laughing. He goes, I, man, I just sold tickets to see that. Ugh. He goes, I've never seen anybody make him shut up and run. But now you bruised his ego. Yeah, and he goes, he goes, uh, you've made a real enemy there. Yeah. He goes, he's not gonna take kindly this. Mm -hmm. He goes, uh, so uh, just watch your back. I said, not a problem. So I get back to my, my orientation. Not a problem at all. Because so, I'm still in orientation. Yeah. Right there. You've got your own little single my cell. My own single cell. Yeah. And I get a cell move. Now I'm moving to three building. Okay. Three building's a regular mainline cell. Yeah. And uh, I get over there and the cop walks me in. But it's still single cells. But it's really funny yeah. because as I'm walking down the tier, there, <laughs> my next door neighbor over here, his bottom bunk has been moved up to be a top bunk. Yeah. Even though we don't have, you know, he didn't need. But what's he got under there is he's got a saddle tree where he's made. He's making leather saddles, <laughs> real full size saddles in his cell because that's his hobby. Wow. And so he sleeps in the bunk and works on, on down below. So I go in there and he tells me he, he, about an hour after I get there, he goes, psst, hey, psst. And I go, yeah. He goes. You're new here, right? I go, yeah. He goes, you're the one that Wesley doesn't like, huh? Oh, I go, yeah. And he goes, here, I got something for you. And I'm like, yeah, because I already know about don't accept stuff in prison. Yeah. And he goes, you'll need this. And he hands me around three L.A. County phone books. And the L.A. County phone books are about four and a half inches. Um, so the guy is in Folsom, old Folsom. 
Repressa, California, near Sacramento. And he's got LA phone books. Now, of course, you could have gone maybe to the, the law library and looked at a phone book, but to have three and all of them be LA County phone books. I believe it. Again, I, I, it's, this is completely believable. Pinch a stick. Yeah. And a roll of duct tape. Yeah. He goes, make yourself a vest. Mm -hmm. You're going to need it. And, of course, at that time, they used to issue his Navy pea coats, these big wool coats. Yeah. And Folsom gets really cold. You know. And uh, so I make this vest up, you know, mm -hmm. out of the phone books and duct tape and mm -hmm. stuff. And he goes, uh, you want a knife? I tell him, no. Mm -hmm. Now, why did his neighbor, oh my God, why does his neighbor have so much love for the guy that he's willing to give him these phone books that he could keep for himself and, um, and give him a knife, doesn't know him from anywhere, and apparently is willing to take on the wrath of an organization that people don't want to take, you know, any of them organizations, doesn't matter which one, you don't want to take them on, but he's willing to do it for a guy he's never met, this is... I, 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 again, I believe every word. He's, this guy's, wow, he's been through it all. He's done it all. He's seen it all. He is it all. I said, because I, I, I already told myself, if I take a knife, if I bring, put him to carry a knife in prison, I'll never get out of prison. Yeah. Because I'll use it. I know how to use it and I'll use it very well. Yeah. My thing was, is not to kill anybody if I can avoid it. Of course, yeah. But I also said that, if I have to, I'll cripple him. Because mm -hmm. I can explain crippling at a board. I can't explain killing at yeah. a board. Yeah, you know, the, the board will be like, well, you know what, we, we, it's cool. You know, you, he's only crippled, you know. He's only better off dead, but yeah, he's crippled. All right, you, you can go home then, you know. <laughs> I really don't want to take you guys, and we'll go a couple more minutes. It's hard to listen to. If I don't know if you guys are hearing that noise, my, uh, Stream Deck is acting up right now, but let's, I, my Stream Deck is fed up, I think. Yep, look, there it is, right on time. Was, that was my mentality, my thoughts, anyway. Yeah. It seemed more sensible for yeah. some reason. Uh, so anyway. I... Are their legs touching? Are they, is this an intimate conversation? I come out, I go to the yard, I keep getting watched, I keep getting watched, guys who don't know what to do. <sighs> and the next thing I know, other guy, white guys are now hanging out with me and not being a part of the stuff. Well, hasn't he green lights at you? Well, he, he's... He... Okay, now Sean is like, hold up. I think Sean's like, hold up. Now, uh, my BS meter is starting to go off because he, this dude is attracting other guys to be like, we could stand up too. Because they couldn't do it before he got there. He's five foot six. And wears muscle shirts, muscle shirts with no muscles. He's he's told people this, you know. Yeah. Well, he actually gone to the BGF to give them the opportunity to to, to stab me. <laughs> Where does that make sense in the world? Where does that make sense? You guys know I don't talk about these groups, man. I don't I don't ever use the names of them. But so the so they went to a completely different group and asked them to handle something that is none of their concern. <laughs> and Juan okay. Greer told them absolutely not. Okay. Absolutely not. He told the guys, no. Yeah. He goes, We're not gonna help him, but we're not gonna hurt him. We're just yeah. gonna watch this because this is getting really fun. <laughs> and then he went over and told you know told the shot caller from the North uh, Mexican Mafia and the Paisas, hey, nobody backs the white boys yeah. on this. This yeah. is a, this is him of them. Yeah, because um, that's common. <laughs> how are all these groups on the yard together at the time? Also, now that I think of it, how are they all on the yard together and there's nothing happening? Normally, there's one group that's going to be slammed. And they rotated groups back then. But, um, you know, we're not supposed to, you know, the majority don't know that stuff. So this story is making sense to those that don't know. Mm -hmm. I think we're not going to be involved in this. Yeah. So there's this old white guy in the yard. And uh, 
we're out there one day, and uh, he walks over and he says, I don't know what to think of you. Mm. He goes, you're either one of the toughest guys I've, I've ever met. Yeah. Or more likely, you're one of the stupid and craziest guys I've mm -hmm. ever met. He goes, I kind of hope it's the second one, because if you're that tough, he goes, there's going to be a bloodbath one of these days, and I don't want to be around because you're either going to kill a lot of people or they're going to kill you. Yeah. And it's going to take a lot of them to do it. And there's going to be a lot of shooting. <laughs> It's going to take a lot of them to kill him. Oh, God, this is amazing. You guys were right. I, I don't want to, I, I, I feel like this video is long enough. I think that's a good place to stop. But I do want to hear what, the, the, we'll hear. A... You know, he goes, I don't like shooting. He goes, and he, he gave me a line that I used many years later. He goes, yeah. you know, all my life. And he goes, I've never been allergic to anything but one thing, and that's small lead projectiles entering my body at a high rate of velocity. It <laughs> ruins my whole day. Yeah. And he goes, I don't want to be around you when that starts happening. Yeah. So anyway, he tells me, but watch yourself, because they're still trying to figure out. But then I find out from one of the runners for the BGF that nobody else is going to help him. It's going to come out. Them. And now they're, they're upset, because they even went to the bikers, because they knew I had some clip in them. Yeah, I can't listen to it. I can't. I can't. Oh. Um. How did? Hey, it's good entertainment. It's good fun, um, but it's just amazing. You know, this is the kind of stuff. The reason why Hollywood does the movies they do, and why so many people from outside of California think they know what's really going on in California prisons. They're always in the comments trying to check me about, you know, what I don't know about California, but yet they've never been to California prison. Uh, and unfortunately, I, I served over 24 years straight. Um, anyways, that's the video. Hopefully, you guys liked it. Uh, you already know. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. Um, if you didn't, give me a thumbs down. But let me know what you didn't like so it's so I can see if it's something I can work on. Share the video if you, if you know anybody that would like it. Also, if you're not subscribed, do me a favor and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification and hit all. Um, YouTube saying that there's a lot of people that aren't hitting that and um, I, that'll help out a lot. You know, if you like this video, subscribe. Anyways, stay safe, stay smart and tell the ones you love that you love them, right? I'm out.